Well, achieving football, I was paid to do it. It was my job, I'm expecting to give my lot and I think that's why I was respected and appreciated. I was in the final year of my contract at Middlesbrough. The summer prior to that, I mean, Brian Robson, the manager, had brought in some big hitters, like your Ravin, uh, Ravinelli's, people like that. With Barnby there, Fjortov, they brought Mikel Beck in. And I was playing more a substitute role. I was on the bench for the first part of the three months of the season. Uh, not causing problems, I was just enjoying being part of the things because the club were on a different level. We, like Sir Gininho as well there, uh, Emerson. And, uh, but I thought, right, am I going to sit in my bum all season on the bench here? I'm, I'm not up for that. Uh, but I never caused any problem. And we're going to be in a, a mid-season tour in October uh, to Bangkok for a week. And on landed back in the UK and Brian Robson just said to me, he says, John, he says, uh, Barnes are in for you. And he said, uh, we've accepted a bid for him if you want to go and talk to them. Uh, I spoke to Paul Wilkinson, who had been my teammate at Borough prior to that. And he says, yeah, John, play some great football. He says, we've got a chance as well. Good chance of, of uh, certainly being in the playoffs. So uh, I went down, spoke to Danny. Uh, he sold the club well, come over ever so well, told me we'd play good football and I'll be playing. So I thought, right, okay. Bearing in mind that I've, I've always lived in Yorkshire, I, d I didn't want to wait to the end of the season. Been out of contract and couldn't get a, a club in Yorkshire. I thought, right, I don't want, last thing I want is to end up down the south coast because my family were settled in Yorkshire. So uh, that was it. I signed and uh, and took it from there. And I must say, I mean, the first few weeks it just took took me because I hadn't been playing. It took me a few weeks just to get the uh, match fitness, match sharpness. But uh, once it clicked, then the rest is history. What were your first impressions of Barnsley Football Club and Danny Wilson, manager? First impressions were it was a great dressing room. Very, very welcoming dressing room. They walked in from day one and you couldn't meet a, a better bunch of lads. So receptive to you, made you feel at home. And uh, just good, honest pros as well. We're a bit of humour laced in there as well with the likes of Darren Sheridan. Uh, and they enjoyed the football. They could play as well. So I thought, yeah, I'm up for this. I'll have some of this. And, uh, and Danny had a, had a good way with the players as well. I mean, we'd, we'd have, as I said, we had a few senior pros there. Myself, Neil Thompson, Neil Redfern, Paul Wilkinson, and uh, <coughs> Steve Davis. And he, he, res he respected the senior pros and he let us have, have, have a little say as well. So it was, uh, I think from day one, I was comfortable with it all. Can you describe your feelings of scoring your first goal for us, Barnsley, against Port Vale? Yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one because it was the, uh, the outside of the right boot, yeah. top corner, a wee bit the one, like the one against Schmeichel years later. Uh, but yeah, I mean that was one of those I thought, right, I've done it very often through my career, even in training, just a little flick outside book, uh, catch goalkeepers unaware because they weren't expecting it. Uh, so yeah, I remember that and uh, we won 3-1 down there at Port Vale and we played some terrific football that night and that's when I, that was probably one of the first games I realised how good we were. 26th of April 1997, that famous day against Bradford City. What were your feelings prior to the match? It's tension, apprehension, because you know you're, you've got to go out there and you've got a job to do. The supporters coming down with a party atmosphere and everything else, they're thinking, wait, get a result, we're promoted here. All I'm focusing on is good skin out there and getting the three points. It was against Bradford City as well. Now, bear in mind, I mean, uh, my career took off at Bradford. Uh, I've been through a lot at Bradford City, the, the Bradford Fire in 56. Poor souls died, might have you, worst day of my life. And playing against City, uh, and they were fighting for their lives as well. I mean, they could have got relegated. So, I remember, obviously, crossing for Paul Wilkinson to score the first goal. Then Bradford City hit the, the post, so we thought, hey, this isn't over, this. This isn't over. Then, obviously, Clint scored the, the, the clinching goal. And which was just a feeling of relief. Uh, but I remember the final whistle going, it was one of elation, fantastic atmosphere. But the back of mind, I'm thinking as well, I mean, those Bradford fans have stayed behind us, celebrating with us, applauding us. Don't milk it, don't milk it, because those, those guys are fighting for rele relegation. Show your respect to them as such. And I think it's fair to say that uh, a lot of the Barnsley fans recognised that fact, and a lot went up to watch Bradford City in their last, couple, last game of the season. 
as they tried to stay in the league. Uh, fortunately, Bradford City did. So that was that made a wee bit of a bond between the Bradford fans and the Barnsley fans. So uh, that that was my recollection of a day. The beauty that Danny had was we had experienced players there. I've mentioned them before, the likes of Redfern, Wilkins, um, myself. So we could, even though Danny was a manager, he could look at us to help him along as well. He's not in the dressing room all the time, we were. And we, we were a big part in, in keeping the preparation just low key and just be totally focused for the, the, the match on the Saturday. Can you describe atmosphere at Oakwell then when Clint Marcel scored that second goal? Electric. <laughs> Absolutely electric. And, uh, and I think because, I mean, Bradford had sort of hit the, the woodwork prior to that, I think it was just one of relief as well because it had been a long old season and uh, being in mind we weren't the favourites, we went under the radar all the way along, no one expects us to do it, but come when it comes to the last game of the season, there's no way you could have let the supporters down, so it was certainly one of relief as well. What memories have you got from the, from the first, well, the, the only season of Premiership with Barnsley? Well, from day one it was, it, it was going to be tough, it was going to be tough, I mean we, we brought a few foreign players in, players who Never mind the Premier League. It was a culture of being used to Britain as well, so it was uh, it was a big step for them. But uh, well, the first one it was right top, wasn't it? West Ham. I think right, okay, if we can just start off, we're getting a result here. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> like typical first game of the season, always right top. Unfortunately for us, we, we, we couldn't get a result. But uh, it was just like the support that day and for the rest of the season it was absolutely brilliant because. Come what may, if we stayed up, got relegated, or whatever, the Barnsley fans were got to treat it like an adventure. They'd never had it before in the history, and who's to say will they again? We don't know. Uh, in, in our lifetime, so the supporters they just treated it like, like one big adventure, uh, which which was great for us. They never put too much pressure on us. Scored against Manchester United in the FA Cup. What's yeah. your memories of the first goal? We had lost a few weeks prior to that. Was it seven? seven no, yeah. Did. And I remember Paul Scholes after scoring his fourth goal. And I, I remember seeing him celebrating and giving it one, two, three, four. And I thought, you little so and so. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, every dog has its day. So, of course, a few weeks later, the, the, the draw is made FA Cup fifth round draw, Man United versus Barnsley. And I remember that, the. the, the the Schmeichel back pass, because the ball went to Gary Pallister and he played the ball back with a wee bit of pace on it. Yeah. Now, maybe he's a, a lot less inexperienced centre forwards wouldn't have chased it down, we'd just have left it. But I can recall him playing it back with pace on the ball and I'm thinking, he's got to have a touch on this. Now, if I run it down with a bit yeah. of pace, if I run it down, it's putting him under pressure. Because I've chased it back with a bit of pace, he's, he's panicked, yeah. And, and, and tried to play the ball up and he sliced it. Well, as soon as that ball went to the right, the little legs went like a clappers. <laughs> <laughs> the little legs went like a clappers, they did, I'll tell you. And it was just a matter of the race was only me and him. And I remember all the Barnsley fans behind the goal. And my dad, God bless him, was at that game as, was at that game as well. And he didn't get to that many games uh, because of his health. And I remember just getting there. I think, right, okay. So my left side here. If you don't score now, John. <laughs> First time I'd ever scored at Old Trafford. This is the moment. Fulfilling a dream in the stadium of dreams. And I just I mean, stroked it into the net there. What a feeling. What a feeling. Absolute feeling. I mean, all the Barnes, the fans went mad. My teammates went mad. Running back to the halfway line. And I've got tears in my eyes. Yeah. I've got actual tears in my eyes thinking, Dad, you're in there. Yeah. That's for you. That's, That's for you. People always ask me about that, my, my celebration in the, the replay at Oco, the game of 1-3-2. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it was, because if you came down the tunnel in those days, to, to, to the left hand side and all behind the goal was my new fans. So they, they had this bottom half and then behind the goal. The ball was played through, it was Darren Bernard played through it and, I, and I've run through. Run through and it's like rolled outside the, the boot again, top corner like against Port Vale. So, so as I've put it in the back of the net, all behind the goal here, all up beside here where I am, it's just silence, it's all, all my new fans, there's no one cheering, I'm thinking, I've just got to get my new, there's no one cheering, and I just went, like that, like that, and I thought, I'm not running away up there, in I'll just do it here with my new fans, and that was why I celebrated like that, it, was, it wasn't because I thought I was offside or anything like that, that's no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't like, no, 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 that, that's the truth. 
How did you feel about making the move to, to become player manager for Barnsley FC? I'll be honest with you, I mean, I I'd had all my badges. Uh, and we'd been relegated. I'd one se season left in my contract, and I'd gone away on holiday. As far as I was concerned, I didn't even know that Danny Wilson was, uh, was leaving the football club. So I'm on holiday, and I was due to come back on a Saturday. And training was starting on the Monday. So as I get in on the Monday evening, there's so many voice messages, John Dennis and what have you. So eventually I picked it, picked it up on Saturday evening, and it, out of the blue, complete out of the blue, hi hey, John, John Dennis here. I want you to become uh, Barnsley manager. Uh, Danny Wilson has jumped ship to Sheffield Wednesday. I went, I was just caught. But it was the furthest thing from my mind that I wanted to do, or like, well, even though I had my badges. It was very much a never attempt to think about it. Just get in and get on with it, throwing in the deep end. No scouting, no pre season, nothing. It's like you walking in tomorrow and say, bang, get on with it. And very much that was the case. So it was, it was like a culture shock because you've gone from one side of the dressing room to the other. In a way, you've got to distance yourself. But certainly, it was very much thrown in the deep end and learn as you go along. I knew uh, that I had to get bodies in and scoured everywhere. I knew about Craig Kignett. I knew what sort of player, what he could do, what he couldn't do. And Bruce Dyer. I thought, right, I mean, Bruce, well, he could come into my camp here and add quality and add goals to my squad here. But Craig Kignett would probably yeah, well, not probably would have signed for Manchester City if uh, if I hadn't uh, flown up to Aberdeen. I got a flight from Leeds Bradford up to Aberdeen, convinced them to come to Oakwell rather than Main Road as such. Uh, and fortunately for Barnsley fans, because I think I got him in for seven hundred fifty grand, and what did they sell him on for two point three million or something? So he was he was a very very good buy. And it, there was only one game. Was it one, one uh, maybe it's one game when I had Hignett, Dyer and Ward and we beat Huddersfield 7-1. About that 7-1 thrashing Huddersfield, mm -hmm. what are your memories on it? Memories on it, uh, Huddersfield were managed by Peter Jackson, my ex-teammate at Bradford, Terry Yorith, my ex-coach at Bradford. Uh, and I remember just thinking, what a performance. 6-0 at half time. And it was, I touched on it there, Craig Kignett was on fire. I mean, the front three I mentioned there with Darren Bernard, that window goal as well. It was just, it was just a fantastic night. Uh, we, we took, I, mean, I think we missed a penalty as well. It could have been even more. We took the gas off a wee bit in the second half, but uh, whoa, that was some display. Describe your relationship with the Barnsley fans. Brilliant. Yeah. And one word, brilliant. Because I remember when, when I'd left Barnsley, when, when I'd, uh, when I'd left, left my job, I never really had a, a proper chance to say cheerio. Yeah. When you're in as a manager, the only one sure thing you've got to get is a bullet. Simple as that. And yeah, I know the game. And it's, but I never had a proper chance to say cheerio. And I had but a brilliant time there. The fans were great to me. So I I'd, had I'd sort of young children, and my daughter was at secondary school at the time. And I'd gone down. Leeds United asked me to come down and, 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 and uh, be guest of theirs against uh, Barnsley and FA Cup at uh, Ellen Road. And I took my daughter as my guest for me. And it, we were in the, the hospitality suite, but we had to get to the other side of the ground. And prior to the match, we're walking around, my daughter, my young teenager, and what have you, we're walking around the pitch side with someone from Leeds, and we then walked past the Barnsley fans. And all the Barnsley fans stood up and just started singing my name. And I turned round, because I'd never had a prop, proper chance to say cheerio. I turned round and my daughter was crying. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I said, what's wrong? Yeah. What's wrong, Lauren? And she, and she turned around, because she got a lot of stick at school. You know what school kids are like, can be cruel and everything else. She says, Dad, I thought the Barnsley fans never liked you. I said, what are you on about? <laughs> I says, listen, listen, Dan, I says, you don't let, the, you don't let one Bad day. Bad day when you get a bullet ruined two and a half magical yeah. years, yeah. and that's certainly the that's case. Right. That is certainly the case. It was, I got on great with them. Yeah. If you give it your all, if you give it your lot for them, and you do well for them, you're, as I said, you're always one of them. You'll always be part of the Barnsley. You're part of history, and, and uh, so the supporters. It's, it's a unique town. The supporters are absolutely fantastic. Though. 
I'm so proud of what I've achieved, but for me, it was my job, I'll go out there, and I, I'm from a, a working class background. I, I know what it means to people. Great memories at, at Barnsley, but they were happy times, and I'm just so proud to be part of Barnsley's history, and being that team, part of that squad, that had us in the Premier League for the only time in the history. Great times.